President Putin, did you want President Trump to win the election, and did you direct any of your officials to help him do that? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Because he talked about bringing the U.S.-Russia relationship back to normal. My people came to me, Dan Coates came to me and some others. They said they think it's Russia. Uh, I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be. There you see President Trump with Vladimir Putin back in 2018 discussing Russian interference in the 2016 election as we've seen dramatic new revelations this week about how Russia is attacking our elections again. Reports that senior intelligence officials have told lawmakers that Russia is interfering in the 2020 election with the aim of re-electing President Trump, and that Russia is interfering in the Democratic primaries to help Bernie Sanders. Sanders responded yesterday in Nevada. We were told that Russia and maybe other countries are going to get involved in this campaign. Uh, and look, here is the message to Russia. Stay out of American elections. Let's address all this now with the president's national security advisor, Robert O'Brien. Ambassador O'Brien, thank you for joining us this morning. How is Russia interfering in the 2020 election? Well, there are these reports that they, they want Bernie Sanders uh, to get elected president. That's no surprise. He, he honeymooned in Moscow. Uh, the President Trump has rebuilt the American military to an extent we haven't seen since Ronald Reagan. So uh, I, I don't think it's any surprise that Russia or China or Iran uh, would want somebody other than uh, President Trump. If President Trump's elected, we're going to continue a peace through strength foreign policy and defense policy, and that's not good for our adversaries. It's good for us and our allies. Well, the reports are actually that they're trying to help Bernie Sanders in the Democratic primaries. And, of course, you've seen the reports uh, that the lawmakers have been briefed by an intelligent professional that it's Russia's aim to favor President Trump in the 2020 election. Have you seen analysis from the intelligence community showing that one of Russia's aims in its election interference is to help President Trump. Yeah, I have not seen that, and, and I get pretty good access, uh, as you know from your time in the White House, the National Security Advisor gets pretty good access to our intelligence. I haven't seen any intelligence that, uh, that Russia is doing anything to, uh, to attempt to, to get President Trump reelected. I, I think this is a, a, the same old story that, that we've heard before. Uh, I, I've seen the reports from that briefing at the Intel Committee. I wasn't there. But I've, I've seen no intelligence uh, that suggests that. I've also heard that uh, from the briefers that that's not what they intended the, the story to be. So, look, who, who knows what happened over at the House and the Intelligence Committee. Uh, but I haven't seen any evidence that Russia is doing anything to uh, uh, attempt to get President Trump reelected. And our message to the Russians is stay out of the U.S. elections. Uh, we've been very tough on, on Russia, and we've been great on election security. So uh, I, I think it's a non-story. Well, a non-story. Obviously, a lot of people don't think it's a non-story. Obviously, the lawmakers who were briefed don't think it's a non-story. And the reports are that the election security official who briefed Congress, Shelby Pearson, said several times during the briefing that Russia had developed a preference for President Trump. Was she not telling the truth? Well, what I heard from the Republican lawmakers there, and again, I wasn't at the hearing, so I can't comment what, what happened to the hearing, and I'm not going to play that Washington game, but what I heard from Republican lawmakers is that there was zero intelligence that was proffered to them to support uh, that sort of comment. I haven't seen any of that intelligence. Uh, so if it's out there, it's something I haven't seen. But I, I highly doubt it because, look, it's a common sense question. Why would Russia want the president who's rebuilt the American military, uh, who's given the, the Ukrainians lethal uh, arms, javelin missiles, and, and has sanctioned the Russians far more than any, any president in recent history, why would they want him reelected? I mean, that just doesn't make common sense. Well, you have seen the intelligence that Russia was trying to hack Burisma, right, which is, of course, uh, the, the firm, the ga natural gas firm in Ukraine that Hunter Biden once worked for. And, of course, President Trump had talked about that several times. You have seen those reports, haven't you? Well, I, look, I'm not going to get into specific intelligence issues uh, but, uh, 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 with respect to Ukraine. But what I will tell you is that I do think the Russians and the Chinese and others like to sow disruption in the American electorate. And I, and I think they've done a, a, a and, and that, that doesn't mean because they prefer a particular candidate. It's because these are autocratic regimes that don't believe in, a, in democracy, and they'd like to see Americans at each other's throat. And I think there are a lot of folks who've played right into that. I think the Russians have gotten a, a great return on investment for a, a, a very small amount of, uh, of election interference. I mean, they helped steal. Uh, they helped with the dossier. Uh, yeah, so, and, and they've, they've gotten Americans uh, polarized over this thing. But I can tell you that there's... We're, we're going to do everything we can to keep the Russians, the Chinese, the Iranians, the North Koreans, or anybody else who would like to do us harm out of our election. 
I, I have to press you on this. You, are, you, are you really saying you've seen absolutely no intel analysis from the intelligence community showing that one of Russia's aims, just one of Russia's aims, is to favor President Trump? I, I, no analysis at all? No, what I'm talking about, I've seen no intelligence, the, and, and I haven't seen that analysis. The only analysis I heard was reported secondhand uh, from leaks from the House Intelligence Committee that, that purport to claim uh, that the woman who briefed them said that. But I've seen zero intelligence uh, that Russia's doing anything okay, to, so help, to help, to help, to help President Trump get reelected, and I, I, I don't think it makes any sense. It doesn't make common sense. And, and look, let me tell you what we are doing. We're making sure we're working very hard with all the agencies. We're working very hard with the states. Uh, we're going to paper ballots in many cases uh, to harden our election infrastructure uh, to make sure that not only is there not election influence through trolls and, and Twitter and that sort of thing, but to make sure that countries can't hack into our secretaries of state in our 50 states and change election results or, or, or cause mischief on election day. Uh, we're we're going to do everything we can to harden our, our systems to make sure that our elections are free and fair and the will of the American people is, is implemented. So you're drawing a distinction here between intelligence and analysis, and that is fair. Let me ask you, you've seen no analysis. Have you seen any analysis that one of Russia's aims is to, is to help President Trump, is to favor President no, Trump? I, I haven't seen any intelligence on that, George, and I haven't seen any analysis on that. The only thing I've seen are, were the, the press reports on this House intel briefing, uh, which are secondhand. I don't know if they were leaked out or, or how the papers got those. Uh, so, so that's the only thing I've seen, but I have not seen that in the presidential daily briefs and my conversations with Director Haspel. Uh, acting Director McGuire. I, 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 I haven't talked to her because I, you know, I usually wouldn't work with someone at her level, but I'm, I was briefed by Joe McGuire, by, by uh, Director Haspel, by uh, the new Acting Director Grinnell, and I have not heard that analysis or, or seen any intel along those lines. So if it's out there, it hasn't been shared with me, and as far as I know, the, the two Acting Directors at NDI that I've dealt with and the CIA Director I haven't seen it either. So uh, all I've heard about is this House Intel Committee I also heard, I mean, the Republicans have said this, that they asked for the backup for uh, the analysis and there was no intelligence backup so, for it. So, so, so just to be clear, uh, I don't know. You're, so just to be clear, you're accepting the analysis that the Russians want to help Bernie Sanders, but you're not, you're saying you've seen no analysis that they want to help President Trump, despite the fact that it's been reported and been briefed uh, to the Congress. It's also been reported that President Trump was angry when he was told about this briefing, that he confronted the former Director of National Intelligence, Joseph McGuire, and replaced McGuire with current Ambassador to Germany, Richard Grinnell. That's all true, isn't it? Yeah, no, I, no, again, that, that, that's not true. I was in that meeting, and the President was not angry with Joe McGuire. He thinks very highly of, of Admiral, Admiral McGuire and would have liked him to stay in government uh, in a different role. But as you know, Admiral McGuire's time as the acting uh, DNI was, uh, was up in a week or two. Uh, we were looking for someone who was Senate confirmed under the Vacancy Act. We needed a Senate confirmed official to come in and replace him. And so we went with a highly qualified uh, person, Ambassador Grinnell, uh, ambassador to Germany. Keep in mind the first director of national intelligence, Ambassador Negroponte, had previously served in Ambassador Grinnell's position. So Ambassador Grinnell is there for a temporary period of time. We expect to nominate a terrific candidate uh, for a director, a full-time director of the DNI, submit them for Senate confirmation. And I think the President's going to urge, and I'm going to urge, the Senate to move quickly to confirm a new full-time uh, confirmed director of the National Intelligence uh, uh, or, uh, Office of the Director of National Intelligence so we can get someone in there through the election and, and, and take this out of politics. Well, hey, a lot, as you know, your critics, the president's critics have said, including Mark Warner, the ranking Democrat on the Central Intelligence Committee, has in fact said, in fact, that you're injecting politics in there because Ambassador Grinnell has had experience, of course, as a consumer of intelligence, but no, no significant experience in the intelligence uh, community. I do want to press, though, on, 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 on what happened with Admiral McGuire uh, as well, because, as you know, it's been uh, several inside and outside the community believe that, in fact, he was forced out because of his use, including Admiral William. McRaven, the former admiral, who, of course, served with Joe McGuire as a Navy SEAL. He has an op-ed in the Washington Post uh, this morning. I want to show that uh, right now. Uh, and M Ambassador McRaven said, if good men like Joe McGuire can't speak the truth, we should be deeply afraid. Goes on to say, quote, Joe was just dismissed for doing his job, overseeing the dissemination of intelligence to elected officials who needed that information to do their jobs. When good men and women can't speak the truth, when facts are inconvenient, when integrity and character no longer matter, when presidential ego and self-preservation are more important than national security, then there is nothing left to stop the triumph of evil. 
How do you respond to Admiral McRaven? Well, I, I don't know how to respond to, to Bill McRaven. I mean, he was a great Navy SEAL, but I didn't see him in the Oval Office uh, when we were talking to Joe McGuire. I didn't see him in any of the meetings that we had with the president. So, I, I mean, he, he must have supernatural powers or some sort of incredible uh, intelligence collection to be able to get to what the president and the senior aides were thinking. I mean, the, the fact of the matter is Admiral McGuire had to leave uh, his acting position on March 11th. And so that's why he left. Admiral McGuire is held in the highest regard. I've never heard anyone criticize Admiral McGuire, including the president, uh, for briefing him. I've sat through dozens of, of presidential daily briefs with Admiral McGuire. And, and Joe's a great guy. He's a friend. I think the president thinks very highly of him. And we would like to, to, to see Joe stay in government. And so he, but he served for a long time as a combat veteran and, and in the intelligence community. I think he wants a little time off with his wife. But I think he's a great guy. The president thinks he's fantastic. Uh, no one ever criticized him for saying anything. So I, I, I don't even know where that comes from, from uh, from Bill McRaven. But uh, look, I, I respect Admiral McRaven. He, he, he did a good job as a Navy SEAL. I think, you know, maybe his... He's trying out his new new uh, uh, job as a pundit in the Washington Post, and uh, I, I don't know how he'd have that information since he wasn't in the meetings and I was. One final time, Ambassador Barr, you're flatly denying that the intelligence community has analysis that Russia is trying to is favor President Trump in the 2020 election. What, I, what I'm saying is I have not seen that analysis, George. I, no, no one's briefed me on it. Uh, including the leadership of the IC. So after these so, reports came out, you didn't ask to see this analysis? Yeah, I, look, look I, 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 I've been with the leaders of the intelligence community. They don't have it. So uh, if, if there are some lower-level people at DNI that came in and gave this analysis to the House, look, I, I'd like to see it, but I haven't seen it. And I don't think uh, Richard Grinnell has seen it. I don't think Gina Haspel has seen it. So, uh, look, I don't know what happened in this House hearing. Uh, all I know is that the Republicans on the, on the side of the House hearing were unhappy with the hearing and said that there was no intelligence to back up what was being said. But here, here's the deal. I don't even know if what's been reported as being said is true. You know, those are leaks coming well, out of that hearing. Don't you have a responsibility hearing. as National Security Advisor to find out, to go find out? And why is the president calling it disinformation? Well, look, I, I don't know. These are leaks. You're, you're basing your assumptions, George, on leaks that came out of a House Intelligence uh, Committee hearing. And I'm telling you, I haven't seen the intel and I haven't seen that analysis and, and the senior leadership of the IC hasn't seen it. So have you, know, you asked for it? Uh, look, I, I want to get whatever analysis they've got and, and I want to make sure that the analysis is solid. I mean, you know, from, from what I've heard, again, this is only what I'm seeing in the press. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, why would the Russians want the president who's increased NATO spending $400 billion from a non-American NATO member states over through 2024, who spent $2.2 trillion in, in upgrading our, our military, which had been in a terrible state of readiness because of sequestration of the prior administration, and, and who's moving out of endless wars and moving American troops to, into Europe and Asia to confront the great powers, why would they want him reelected? That doesn't make any sense to me. But look, if there's someone from the intel community that has something different, be happy to take a look at it. I just haven't seen it. That's the question you're asking me. I haven't seen it. Doesn't make any sense, but I'm happy to look at it. Mr. Ambassador, thanks for your time today. Thanks. Good, for, good being with you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.